Hand Over Turf on the left, Jack Kiefer on the right. Grixis Control against Four Color Colossus. And we will be underway here in just a moment. Welcome to the SCG Tour. Make sure you do give us a follow over at SCG Tour on Twitter. And welcome to the new channel, twitch.tv slash SCG Tour for 2017. I think uh, elements of Jack's deck here, uh, very informative here as you see him lead off with a Renegade map. With Renegade map plus Prophetic Prism plus Spire of Industry, which gets my vote as one of the best cards, if not the best card in Aether Revolt, these artifact-based decks have great mana, and it's not that hard for them to splash uh, multiple colors or even touch double mana off their splash. Well, you see Renegade map there from Jack. That's where he started. One mana artifact enters the battlefield tap. You can sacrifice a Renegade map, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library for Overturf. Just a couple of lands to get started with the Grixis control deck. One of them is an Aether Hub, so you see the Jacob Ball energy token with a counter on it. Another Prophetic Prism here for Jack. There's two of those now, so he's cantripping away, and you can already see how good the mana is for him. And I think this matchup is going to be challenging for Overturf because uh, trying to manage uh, Metal, uh, Metal War Colossus over and over again is very challenging for his deck. Sanctum of Ugin is one of the lands that Jack Kiefer does have. Two swamps down there as well. Looks like a second Sanctum now. Two, and now here is a Hedron Archive. So mana's not going to be a problem. Overturf's going to disallow that. That's the new counter spell, really just a new Void Slime. I, this this card is, I think, going to be very impactful, um, and, and especially if the format's combo-oriented and that puts a premium on counters. This is very versatile. I mean, this is not a trivial extra little piece of power on this card, being able to stop activated abilities or triggers. Just a good counter spell, honestly. Counter target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. You saw him use the counter target spell mode on the Hedron Archive. So now Jack Kiefer is going to play a Glint Nest Crane. Take a look at the top couple of cards. There is an artifact in there. It's another copy of Renegade Map. But he's in search of the payoffs here. His deck... It's not called Four Color Colossus for a reason. It's Four Color Colossus. He wants to have those Colossus. And you can see uh, some challenges here for Overturf. It's really hard for him to manage just the stream of cards. He can't pick fights over cantrip artifacts or, or these cranes. And uh, Kiefer being able to accrue all these extra cards um, gives him more resources to work with and means that when he does find Metal War Colossus, uh, Overturf has to kill it over and over again. He will crane. Get himself a Cultivator's Caravan. You talked about how good the mana is in this deck. Colored mana is not an issue at all here for Jack Kiefer. Yep. Mentioned all these great mana-fixing artifacts and didn't even mention the three mana makes any color of mana with additional upside. Yeah. Kiefer will play another Renegade map and simply pass the turn back to Overturf. Overturf not under much pressure right now, so he'll take the time to Glimmer on Genius. That's Scry 2, then Draw 2, and we can't forget that he'll get two energy as well. A couple of cards going to go to the bottom. He'll take two new cards and two energy as he does untap those four lands, and now he will draw a card. The way that Overturf is going to win here, he's got two win conditions, realistically. One is Torrential Gearhawk, which makes a lot of sense in a deck like this. The second is Dynavolt Tower, which makes a lot of sense in a deck like this. Yep. Plays Both cards play very well with cheap spells, yep. which Overturf's deck is flush full of. And now there is a tower. They'll simply pass the turn back. So while Jack Kiefer does untap here, we're going to take a look at the Dynavolt Tower for those of you who are not familiar. When you cast an instant or sorcery, you get two energy. It's going to take five energy to fire the tower. It's going to deal three damage to target creature or player. You see the cranes are going to come in for two. Overturf's going to fall down to 18. And if you can take a look at Overturf's hand, plenty of instants and sorceries yep. there. Though I do want to go at the, the templating team for Dynavolt Tower and similar cards a little bit. The reminder text two energy when it's really easy to see that it's two energy, and then no reminder text on five energy, not great. which is you know both a little awkward and not cleanly divisible by the number two is pretty bad. It's a little rough because it, it messes with your eyes. I understand so. they want you know they want to have the energy reminder the first instance that energy appears in the card. I understand that, but this is just kind of hard to read. And there are similar cards that are are hard to read for the same reason. It can be. It can be. So Overturf here, bunch of shocks, Galvanic Bombardment, all that good stuff. Going to clear the cranes out. More importantly, though, he's going to get some energy for himself and for the tower, so he's up to nine energy now. Ryan with a To the Slaughter and a Glimmer of Genius in hand. Here is a Glimmer of Genius. Let's see if this resolves. Looks like it will not. It's Metallic Rebuke, the new Mana Leak. Yes. Uh, much hyped card, and uh, another counterspell, I think, will definitely show up in Tier 1. Uh, so certainly an easy play in a blue-blazed artifact deck. Yeah, for Kiefer, his deck can, this is a one-mana 
right. spell for his deck basically every time. Improvise mechanic. We expect to see a pretty decent amount here this weekend. It's very scary. Also, I, I, I might believe here that it wasn't really on Overture's radar. Because nothing is really going on in the game right now, they're playing this waiting game, that, that Glimmer of Genius is really valuable to get him to resolve, try to accrue some extra cards, fix his draw a little bit. He could have waited on that, so I'm not sure if the rebuke was on his radar there. It doesn't appear that it was. You saw a Sky Sovereign slide in there for Jack Kiefer. No creatures to crew it with just yet. Here's a Hedron Archive. It's a little scary there for Overturf, so he's going to use a Disallow on that to counter the Archive. Doesn't want to give Jack two more cards as these players are just playing off the top of their deck. So Overturf will untap. He will draw. Looks like he's picked up another copy of Glimmer of Genius. This one is going to resolve, it looks like. He's going to use the hubs, a swamp, and some sort of blue source here in just a moment, I imagine. He's going to leave a hub back, use a mountain, and a sunken hollow. Glimmer will resolve. He'll also get some energy from the tower as well. He's just got to stack everything the yep. appropriate way here. I believe the tower triggers first, then he resolves his scry and draw two. Then he'll get the energy from the Glimmer. Right. Anticipate Wandering Fumarole, the options there. Ryan's going to take the Anticipate, put the Fumarole on the bottom, and then draw the top card of his deck, which is an island. Two more energy. He's up to 6, 12, 17. That's a lot. That's, that's a couple launches of the Dynavolt Tower. Now we're going to head back over to Jack Kiefer. Has not found a Metalwork Colossus just yet. The thing is, if he finds one, though, he has two Sanctum of Ugans. Yes. And so many artifacts to work with. Here's Anticipate. Top couple. Take another Anticipate. Let's chain him off. Get some more energy while we do it. Storm count two. Ah, he's going to let the... <laughs> <laughs> going to let the first one rip here with the Dynavolt Tower. Kiefer's going to fall down to 17, and now Overturf will untap. And you see that respect there for a Metallic Rebuke. Yep. Did not cast the Anticipate, even though he had the spare man at the end of Kiefer's turn. Well, the Anticipate resolving is just so important. So right. important. If you find a Torrential Gear Hulk here, you can blow this game wide open. Even another card drawing spell here would be great. The three cards Ryan's looking at now, two Harness Lightning and an Incendiary Flow. So you can see exactly what his deck is trying to do. It's basically all spells, Dynavolt Tower and Torrential Gearhawk, a couple creature lands thrown in to be able to kill the opponent. Jack Kiefer's tapping a lot of mana. Elder Deep Fiend. Okay. One copy in the list, I assume, just as a, a, a nice value play with Sanctum of Ugin, plus the deck generates a lot of mana. Yeah. So there are the targets of the Deep Fiend. Remember, you get the target of the Deep Fiend upon cast, you get to tap up to four target permanents. Doesn't have to resolve. And now, Kiefer is going to trigger a Sanctum of Ugin. I think we know what he's going to go find. Yep. And this is where uh, trying to manage this game with counter spells and removal spells becomes very, co very complicated for Overturf. So Sanctum Oven got sacrificed. He gets a search for a spell, color spell with converted mana cost seven or greater. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Good choice to Metal Work Colossus. It costs X less to cast where X is the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts you control. We know Jack's got quite a few of those, so this is going to be on the cheap, and you can sacrifice two artifacts, return Metal Work Colossus from your graveyard to your hand. And this is what you mentioned. Uh, He's got to try to kill this over and over and over again. And these right now, if, if I'm counting correctly, are just at zero mana. Yeah. So it's very, very tough to manage this. You've got Sky Sovereign, Cultivator's Caravan, a couple of Predic Prisms, yeah, you're the up. Renegade maps. Yeah, it's just, this is a freebie. Not only that, but, I, I mean, Kiefer it, theoretically can just untap, play his Colossus, and crew up his vehicles and hit this turn. Yep. I mean, we're, we're looking at a two-turn clock here. Here's a to the Slaughter. We'll take a look at that one as well, for those of you who are not familiar. It's an oldie but a goodie. This is the kind of card to me, to the slaughter, where you, we've seen like one or two in Delirium decklist mm -hmm. in the previous format, but this is a powerful card. Yep. And, and if Kiefer wants to here, he, I believe he can use the Elder Deep Fiend just to crew one of the vehicles and sacrifice that instead and keep the Elder Deep Fiend. Yeah, it looks like he's going to crew the caravan. And he still has enough mana left over here uh, in terms of artifacts on the battlefield where his Metal War Colossuses are still on the super cheap. And the caravan crew the Sky Sovereign. And now the Sky Sovereign will be sacrificed to To the Slaughter. That's really nice sequencing there from Kiefer, protecting himself from potentially a second copy of To the Slaughter. Mm -hmm. So now he's got the Cultivator's Caravan alive, woken up. 
in case he needs to sacrifice that now. Exactly, because yep. he wants to keep the Elder Deep Fiend. Harness Lightning is going to take care of the Caravan, I believe, as these players work themselves through the stack here. And it's uh, essentially even on energy because he gets three from the Harness and then two from the Dynabolt Tower. So Kiefer loses his entire board for now. He's picked up another copy of Sanctum of Ugin. And now I think it might just be time to Colossus it up. So here's Metalwork Colossus. Yep. And it looks like what he did, I thought he was going to lose the Sky Sovereign, but it looks like he kept the Sky Sovereign. Mm. Because Overturf played it to the Slaughter and a Harness Lightning. So that took care of the Elder Deep Fiend, and that took care of the Cultivator's Caravan. There's still a Sky Sovereign out there, but here's a larger point. Overturf's deck really can't beat Metalwork Colossus. It's about the worst threat that he can see, because yes. he, he can't... It's very hard for him to manage a long game of sit around, sort of twiddle my thumbs and cantrip, and now have this turn after turn after turn. Uh, that, that's about the worst sort of threat sequence that Overturf can play against, and, and he's just tapping the map there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, let's say he kills it once, mm -hmm. kills it twice. Uh, he can't kill it a third time. Right. You know, with all this damage-based removal that we talked about, Harness Lightning, sure, he could remove 10 energy counters, I guess, to take care of it once. But realistically, one Metalwork Colossus shows up, Ryan Overturf's going to be in some real trouble, and that's why you saw a hasty concession right there. Jack Kiefer currently up a game over Ryan Overturf, four-color Colossus, up a game over Grixis Control. We'll take a look at the sideboards here, and we are going to start with Ryan Overturf. Another copy to the Slaughter, a Kozak's Return, a Fatal Push, a Summary Dismissal, three Scatter of the Winds, four Negates, four Ceremonious Rejections. So in theory, this is a bit of a stretch here, he could counter Metalwork Colossus a lot. Sure. I mean, uh, these counter spells, Negate, Ceremonious, Rejection, Scatter the Winds, and Summary Dismissal, are all totally passable cards in the matchup. They, are, they have to be improvements over the red removal that he has in, in his deck game one. I don't know if this is enough to tilt the matchup to his advantage, but uh, he may be able to keep Kiefer off balance early on in the game by having enough counters that can fight over the cantrips and the innocuous stuff. For, uh, you know, force it so Kiefer can't build up a critical mass of artifacts and that Metal War Colossus is never really an issue. On the other side of things here for Jack Kiefer, four Implement of Combustion, two Metal Spinners, Metal Spinners Puzzle Knot, excuse me, a Radiant Flames, a Sears Lantern, a Thought Knot Seer, two copies of To the Slaughter, three Yeheni's Expertise. We're going to see a lot of those Expertise over the course of the week, and I imagine, and a Fragmentize. I'm guessing this is pretty light sideboarding here. I would want to bring in, I, I think the two copies of Metal Spinners, Puzzle Knot, the Seer's Lantern, and the one copy of Thought Knot Seer all seem fine here. Uh, but I w most of this uh, sideboard is built towards beating aggressive decks. Makes a lot of sense because Kiefer's deck spends the first couple of turns sort of spinning his tires before it starts doing anything powerful. He's not in that kind of matchup here, so not a whole lot in the sideboard. And those are the options there for both players. Game number two will be underway here in just a moment. But let's talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale. It's time to get a little bit of a discount on those full art basic lands. So every week over at StarCityGames.com, there's a new weekly sale. Every Monday at 11 o'clock Eastern time, the sale updates or changes. So make sure to be going back to the website once a week to see what the sale is. And right now, the sale is up to 50% off of full art basic lands. So for those of you out there who like that Bucket Island for who knows what reason. 50% <laughs> off, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> up to. Up to, I should say. Up to 50% off. I don't actually know the... You don't like the Bucket Island? I do not. It, it's an island. It is. I understand that the, the sort of offbeat basic lands always have an audience. Okay. But that's not for me. That Bucket Island. You're more for traditionalists. Well, t typically, islands don't float. I don't know. Whatever. you got to get a little more creative. StarCGames.com. There it is. That's the way to close it off. So uh, I got that weekly sale. Jack Kiefer, the player we're going to learn a little more about right now. The Kiefers always have a great page. Oh, yeah. Here, so let's take a look. 14 from Boulder, Colorado. Still on search for his first open top eight here on the SCG Tour. On a robotics team called Rocky Mountain Pirates. Pirates, okay. Pie symbol. Oh, that's right. awesome. You get okay. it. Okay. Have won the world championship twice. Love it. Can juggle and ride a unicycle. Of course he can. And can recite... Jeez, 50 digits of pi. Mm -hmm. I think I can get three, and then after that... Uh, yeah, all set. Yeah, that's all about set. as far as I go. Which at a certain point, you know, who cares, right? That's th <laughs> three digits is good enough. <laughs> that's three, close enough. Three, 50, whatever. Right. right. It's basically all the same. Uh, for the 14-year-old member of Team Card Hoarder, 50 digits of pi? I remember when I was young and was good at stuff. Could me remember things? I was really good at remembering stuff when I was young. So I... The thing I love to remember was 
highway exits, mm -hmm. which is kind. I, I was really good at highway exits and license plates. Yep. So back in Cleveland, the main highway is 71. I could just recite every exit from the city I grew up in, Strongsville, all the way to downtown Cleveland. Okay. The number, all of the text, all of it. There was there was a point in my life where every player who was in the NBA, I could tell you what college they went to, or if they were straight from high school, what high school they went to before nice. going to. Now, all gone. See ya. Can't remember anything. It's fine. Back in the, it was so, fun. It was so, fun to memorize stuff when you were yeah. young. So Jack, enjoy it while you can. <laughs> 50 digits of pirates. I like the team name. It took me a minute, but Pirates, I'm totally That's on good, board. I'm totally team. on board. Yeah. That's great branding. Yep. They would have a sweet logo for sure. Should probably talk to the Pittsburgh Pirates, get some things changed. Yep. I, when I first read it, I read it as like Pirates and was because it's sort of mathy. It could be that. But no, then I get it. Yeah. Oh, Pirates. Pirates, yeah. Got it, it took me a minute. I thought it was a typo. Yep. I was ready to yell at someone, but everything is fine. Uh, Rhino Returf is going to start off with a couple copies of Wandering Fumarole for Jack. He's got the Spire, he's got an Inventor's Fair, he's got a Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot, and a Renegade map. This is kind of how these artifact decks are going to start things off, I think. Yes. And I like the Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knots in the sideboard here. Um, probably a little to do nothing for game ones. Not really powerful or synergistic enough, but post board against these blue decks that have a lot of counter spells, ways to interact with artifacts, makes a lot of sense. An Ether Hub here for Ryan Overturf. We're going to head back over to Jack Kiefer. Looks like he picked up his first copy of Metalwork Colossus this turn. There's a Spire Bluff Canal, and now there's a Sears Lantern. So if we're going to play a little bit of a longer game, pretty good spot here for Jack Kiefer. Overturf will take a look at the Lantern. We'll do the same here in just a moment. It's good in long, drawn-out games. This is where he wants to be. You get to do a little bit of scrying. It's a little bit of acceleration. It brings down the cost of Metalwork Colossus. You can't play a ton of them, but those, the first one's good. Those of you, like me, who are veterans of the Battle for Zendikar Seal Leagues, know how good this card is on a long game. Yep. Only one in the board. Here's a Dynavolt Tower. Now, it's interesting. They're both three-man artifacts, but I think the Sears Lantern might be more powerful than the tower here. Yes, and especially, especially because Dynavolt Tower doesn't really interact uh, with what Keeper's doing very much. It can be a win condition if the game drags out long enough, but it doesn't interact with the table all that well. And now with Inventor's Fair, Keeper's going to be able to gain a little bit of life, and that should keep him comfortably out of Dynavolt Tower range. There's a Cultivator's Caravan. We'll see if this will resolve. Overturf does have a copy of Ceremonious Rejection in his hand. And it looks like the caravan is in. And now it's another Puzzle Knot. Probably not going to counter that either, right? Uh, Got to save your rejection for a, a big spell? It, it's tough, though. I mean, uh, Overturf in Game 1 showed no hesitation in fighting over Hedron Archive. Now I know that that also generates mana, uh, but it is much the same equation. Mm -hmm. you, you know, how many two-for-ones can you allow Keeper to have before your counter spells won't even stop the overload of Metalwork Colossus? Well, that's a free Metalwork Colossus. Ooh, boy, that's oh. awesome. Wow. Metallic Rebuke. Costing a single blue, being paid for by the caravan. We're done here. Uh, I think we probably are. I think we are done here. Yep. Overturf's deck is just not set up to fight this kind of fight. Not at all. Not at all. You you get him against some aggressive beatdown decks. Certainly against the Sahili Rai combo, he's got a ton of interaction. But this sort of game, there, there's just not a whole lot his deck can do to to get some clubs up. When I talked to Ryan this morning about what he was playing, the thought process made a lot of sense. He's just, I just want a ton of interaction uh, against, you know, vehicle decks, creature decks, whatever people are doing, and I have a lot of interaction against the combo. Mm -hmm. But he can't stand up to this at all. And I mean at all. And he doesn't have anything like Lost Legacy. Like, he has nothing. And even Lost Legacy doesn't interact with a whole lot of what's going on here, yeah. even if he did have it. Are we going to go inventing? Sure. Let's take a look at the Inventor's Fair. This one sees more play in Vintage than Standard, so Sacrifice Inventor's Fair, search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it in your hand. Uh, I think and he's gonna first prize is <laughs> a, a second copy of Metalwork Colossus. Yes, it is. It's a good choice. <laughs> Inventor's Fair is basically playing the role of Demonic Tutor here. I mean, also a little bit of life game. Like, it's very easy to turn on, I think. Yep. Another Colossus, Sacrifice Sanctum of Ugin. This is a beatdown. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, oh, oh, sure, Elder Deep Fiend. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Okay. That's a nice fun of. S sign me up for this. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good little fun of there. 
Ryan's going to play Scatter to the Winds on the, fir on the second Metalwork loss that was cast. Jack might be able to get that back and still be able to recast it, as frightening as that is. All right, just going to pass the turn back for right now. Yeah, I don't think he can sacrifice an artifact and put the Colossus on the battlefield just this moment. One also, can, one can argue he doesn't even need also, to. Also, who cares, yeah. right? That's the other part of this. Yeah. He's so far ahead. Doesn't really even need to do that. Overturf's hand right now is a couple of lands and a glimmer of genius, and I'm not sure. Again, it, it's the situation. Okay, sure, he kills the 10-10. Yep. Totally fine. There's no long-term plan here. He's not pressuring. He has yep. no source of... There's no commiserate source of card advantage. He's just his draw trying to would stave have to be off. Terminate every turn. Even, yeah, and even that, I don't. I even don't even know. know if that would do it. Yeah, because his metalwork losses also sort of have backdoor haste too, because they can crew the vehicles and start attacking. Sure. So even terminating every, every turn, I don't even know would be good enough. Ah, right, wandering fumarole strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, what I like no quit. Right, no quit here by Ryan Overturf in the future match area part of the coverage team. He wants to get his time. No more time. Jack Kiefer going to win this match here over Ryan Overturf. Two games to zero. Four color Colossus. That's a beatdown over the Grixis control deck Ryan Overturf is playing. And I think you might not necessarily see that, but this could be a foundational element of, of standard. There's a lot of combo decks. There's a lot of really powerful things you can do. And we talk a lot about we watch modern, we watch legacy. You get matchups where it's you know, two ships passing in the night. There's not a whole lot of interaction. Uh, we might see a, a fair bit of that in the standard format as well. Overturf's deck here is car drawing, counter spells, and removal. Yep. That's pretty much what it is. You would imagine at sort of a baseline level, he would be able to interact with almost any deck that he could plausibly run into in a standard tournament. And we just saw he, he couldn't. And yep. even with a sideboard with four negate, four standard on his rejection, three scattered the winds, and he drew, I think, two counter